Good morning, Ovid LC Middle School students. This is Mr. Woolley. And remember, the information contained in this video is intended to be viewed only by the students in Mr. Woolley's classroom. By watching the video, you agree you will not record or share the video with anyone who's not a student in Mr. Woolley's classroom. All right, so you can see we have a different color here today. We got some purple. I'm working with lesson one, generating equivalent expressions. And we're actually going to be over on to page two for our first examples here. What they want us to do is rewrite 5x plus 3x and then 5x minus 3x by combining like terms. So let's deal with the 5x plus 3x first. 5x plus 3x, that means 5 times whatever x is, or if you think of it in more, more literal terms, there's 5 little x's and 3 little x's, and it gives you 8 x's as you visualize it there with all the x's, or you just know that 5 and 3 make 8 of those total x's. Similar concept here, if you have 5 x's, and you're trying to get rid of 3 of them. So you got five of them, and you want to take away three of those. Well, five minus three gives you two. Or if you think of the original five, and you get rid of three of them, well, that's going to leave you with two of the x's there also. <clears throat> so now, find the sum of 2x plus 1 and 5x. So 2x plus 1 is like their own little group. I'm supposed to add 5x to that. Well, the x numbers are considered to be like terms. I can actually add them together. I can't group it with this one. They have to stay separate from regular numbers. So I can take the 2x and the 5x, add them, and get 7x. And as far as regular numbers go, all there was was a plus 1. So 7x plus 1, and I cannot go any farther unless someone tells me what x is. So for example here, if I wanted to solve 7x plus 1, if x equals a negative 3, well, I can actually finish the problem if someone tells me that x equals negative 3, because now I take 7 times, not just x, if x is negative 3, I put 7 times negative 3 plus 1. Now, of course, I multiply first before I would add things. So 7 times negative 3 gives you a negative 21. Add 1, and you get a negative 20. Next up, top of page 3, let's find the sum of negative 3a plus 2 and 5a minus 3. So I have this grouping plus this grouping. Let's deal with the a's first. If I have a negative 3a plus 5a. A negative 3 plus 5 gives me a positive 2 of the a's. Let's deal with the regular numbers now. So we'll keep those separate. 2 plus a negative 3. So 2 plus negative 3 gives me negative 1. So all the a's total up to 2a. Regular numbers total up to a negative 1. So 2a minus 1, or 2a plus negative 1, however you want to phrase that. Now, I could actually solve that expression, 2a minus 1, if I know what a equals. So we'll pretend that a equals 5. If that's the case, it's two, not 2 times a anymore, it's 2 times 5, and I can take away 1. 2 times 5 gives you 10, and 10 minus 1 is 9. Find the product of 2x and 3. So 2x times 3, or you could think of it as 3 times, and in parentheses you could put the 2x there. Either way, you're still going to be able to get 3 times 2 to give you 6, so you get 6 of the x's. And what if I want to take my 6x and said, well, I want x to be equal to 9. 6 times a 9 will give you 54. All right, so 3 times 2x we know is going to be a 6x. 4y times 5, well, I can multiply the 4 and the 5 at least. So 4 times 5 gives you 20 times y. And 4 times 2 times z, well, I can at least multiply the 4 and the 2 together, and I get 8z. All right, as we shift over to our next page. If I had all this together, 3 times 2x plus 4y times 5 plus 4 times 2 times z, remember, I'm going to do multiplication chunks first before I do any adding. So I get 6x plus 20y plus 8z. And I can't add these together anymore because x numbers are separate from y numbers. y numbers are separate from z numbers. So I couldn't just total them all together. So they have to be left individual. All right, here's an example here. It says, Alexander says that 3x plus 4y is equivalent to 3 times 4 plus x times y because of any order regrouping. Any grouping, is he correct? Well, if x is 2 and y is 3, then 3 times 2 gives you 6, and 4 times y, 4 times 3, gives you 12. You get 18 from there. And we said, well, 3 times 4 is 12, and then the other, x times y, which is 2 times 3 gives you 6, it works. So he's right so far. But 
Let's try a different set of numbers. What if I have a negative 2 and a negative 3 to represent the x and the y? Well, if that's the case, 3 times a negative 2 gives me a negative 6. 4 times a negative 3 gives me a negative 12. And negative 6 plus negative 12 gives me a negative 18. Now, is that equivalent to 3 times 4 being 12? And x times y, or what we'll call negative 2 times negative 3, which gives you a positive 6. In this case, it gives us a positive 18. So he is not correct because you have a negative and a positive of the same are not equivalent. So he wouldn't be correct in this statement. All right, let's take a look at some examples here <clears throat> from the problem set. Now on this top group here, A is going to be 2, B is going to be 5, and C is going to be negative 3. So whatever problems we see and deal with, we'll have to make sure we represent those correctly. All right, so if I had 8B minus 4B, Right. I can do 8 minus 4, it leaves me with 4 of the b's, 4b, 4 times b, remember. And if b is supposed to be a 5, 4 times 5 gives me 20. So I'm going to combine those like terms first. I don't want to just substitute in right away, because I know you guys can do that. So I don't want to take, oh, 8 times 5 is 40, 4 times 5 is 20, 40 minus 20 gives me 20. I'm going to practice getting like terms grouped together, because that's what your next few lessons will be focusing on. So. 8b minus 4b gives you the 4b's, 4 times 5 is 20. 3a plus 6 plus 5a. The a's can only be grouped together, so I get 8 of the a's, and the regular numbers was just a plus 6. So remember, a's are supposed to be a 2, based off of our information at the start of the problem. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 6 gives you 22. Now this one, number 6, I'm going to remind you about something here. I got 5c minus 4c, and then plus c. I put a 1 in there. Remember, when a letter is all by itself, it means there's one of them. So 5 minus 4 gives me 1c, plus another c, leaving me with two c's. And c is supposed to be a negative 3, so 2 times negative 3 gives me a negative 6. All right. For number 8, I got 8 times b plus 8 minus 4b minus 3. So I got regular numbers and the b numbers here. So let's deal with the letters first, like we usually try to do. 8b minus 4 gives me 4b. 8 regular numbers, 8 minus 3 gives me a positive 5, so 4b plus 5. And of course, we already know that 4 times 5 is going to be 20, plus 5 gives you 25. All right, next up, all right, let's take a look at numbers 10 through 16's group. 3 times 6a. Well, 3 times 6 gives me 18 of the a's. You know, a is supposed to be a 3 based off of this information now. 18 times 3 gives me 54. 5r times a negative 2. Well, that gives me 5 times negative 2 gives me negative 10 times r. And if r is supposed to be a negative 3, negative 10 times a negative 3 gives me a positive 30. Number 14. I got negative 4 times 3s. So it's a negative 12s over here. 2 times a negative, remember, 1 of the t's. So 2 times a negative 1 gives you negative 2 of the t's. And then I can substitute in s equaling a half and t equaling negative 3. Well, a negative 12 times a 1 half, well, a half of negative 12 is negative 6. And then a negative 2 times a negative 3 gives me a positive 6. So negative 6 plus 6 leaves me a 0. All right, I get my last one here. 7 times 4 gives me 28 of the g's. And 3 times 5 gives me 15 of the h's. 2 times a negative 3 gives me negative 6 of the g's. And then now I can take a look at these and evaluate in just a second because look what before I can evaluate, I got some g's that I can total up together here. 28g minus 6g gives me 22 of the g's plus the 15h. I'll keep the g's and h's separate. Now I can actually evaluate for these. So 22 times a half, well, half of 22 is 11. And then 15 times a third, or a third of 15 is 5. And 11 plus 5 gives me 16. So thanks for watching, and give your homework a try in Schoology.